and the rest of you, open your Bibles along with me to Psalm 118. I'm sure we probably all got it bookmarked at this point. We've been in this in this particular section for a few weeks now. We'll be here for a couple more. We're going to be looking at Psalm 118, verses 13 and 14. So beginning with verse 13, I was pushed back and about to fall, but Yahweh helped me. Yah is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Heavenly Father, Lord, again, we thank you for the blessing of this day. We thank you for your constant love, your care over us, for allowing us this opportunity to be together, to read your word, to share this time of fellowship and worship and praise, to recognize you as our Heavenly Father, to recognize your Son Jesus as our Savior. Lord, I pray that whatever time we have, is a time to glorify you, is a time to speak your great name to all the world, to everyone that we know, and that through everything we would be encouraged to know that you are here with us. Lord, we love you and we praise you. In your name and through the name of your son Jesus we pray. Amen. So we've got two verses here. And I look at them and I kind of see them split. So we really got four parts in these in these uh, two verses that we can examine. And and for the most part, the second, third, and fourth parts of these they read pretty much the same, regardless of what translation you're looking at. But that first part can be read in a few different ways, depending again on the translation. <clears throat> now the NIV says, "I was pushed back and about to fall," whereas two others that I looked at were quite interesting because from the NASB and from the Lexham English Bible, they single out a primary foe as they read, you pushed me, but not only do they single out a primary foe, but listen to the rest of this, you pushed me violently so that I was falling. That's from the NASB and from the Lexham English Bible. It says, you pushed me hard to make me fall. Now, last week, I talked about how the psalmist was surrounded by enemies, and that we as Christians are also surrounded. These are the enemies of God. We are his children, so these enemies attack us as well. They surround us. And the unfortunate part is we often mistake those who are being used against God as the actual enemy. Truth is, is those people are pawns. They're being manipulated. They're being lied to. And ultimately, they deserve our mercy and grace, not our anger or scorn. I mentioned that last week. The real enemy is and always has been Satan, his evil influence, and sin. That is the enemy. Think about what sin is. Think about Satan. Think about evil. These things are opposed to God in every single way. And so they attempt to stand against God, and they stand against those who are with God. That is the true enemy, always has been. Now remember that the psalmist was surrounded, and now is being pushed back again. And the pressures of these attacks continues here and is, and is built upon. The NIV gives a pretty straightforward and formative image of this. It just says that, uh, being pushed back and, and about to fall as though it could happen at any time, being pushed against and I could end up falling. Whereas the NASB and the LEB, uh, they stress two things that the NIV doesn't. First, they stress the strength against, against the, the psalmist, against Israel. It says violently pushed and pushed me hard. It's, it's much more descriptive in that. They also provide a sense of actually being in the motion of falling. Rather than this could happen, it's as though it's happening in that moment. And this creates a much more 
immediate need for help. Think about it. Are you going to feel the immediacy of the situation if you think, well, I could fall, or if you actually are falling? You know, this, the, the distress of the psalmist is emphasized as a greater reality in these readings. And then we hear his cry for thanks, of thanks for salvation. I'm sure that we have all, at one point or another, experienced the dread of, of being surrounded, feeling like we're surrounded by that which is against you. It's, I mean, we kind of we get that. We get overwhelmed and, and things start crowding us and it's like you can't breathe sometimes, right? Now, whether you understood the threat or you simply felt the, the general overwhelmedness or you just feel ill at ease without really knowing why. We all feel this at some point or another. We all have. And I would also guess that we have felt the sensation of falling. Now, I'm not talking literally falling. I'm talking about what is really being described here. I'm talking about this, this sense of, 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 of the motion whether it is imminent or, or, or actually going through it in the midst of falling, this, this sense of having control, this sense of being overwhelmed, this sense of being upside down in things, not understanding fully everything that's going on. And, and this could vary widely depending upon the individual and depending upon the circumstance. There's a lot of things that could lead us to feel this way. Uh, it could be financial. Maybe you're, you're struggling financially, having difficulties paying bills. Uh, you think you got everything all set, you're good to go, and, and then something sudden and completely unexpected comes up, and that security you thought you had is completely wiped out. It could be a health issue a diagnosis of cancer or, or several other ailments, uh, illnesses uh, could give us cause for concern, right? Some would say, most would probably say more than concern, but a genuine worry and fear. A fear of what the future looks like. A fear that there might not be that much of a future left. Make us feel like we're that, that falling sensation. How about in our relationships? Have you ever felt the sensation over difficulties with our spouse, our family, friends, co-workers, or all the things that, that we deal with, the things that we carry as burdens that can cause fear and anxiety and depression. These things weigh upon us. And we are all aware of these things. We have, we have all, I'm sure, felt overwhelmed as, as though we we're falling at some point or another in our lives. We've all gone through this. And the truth is, I mentioned the anxieties and depression, the truth is, is that even when everything seems to be, to be fine, you know, everything's going pretty okay, we can still experience this feeling of falling. In fact, most who suffer from anxiety and depression, it's just very sudden. It just happens. They, they may not have felt surrounded. They certainly didn't feel they were being pushed and about to fall, and yet they do. And they have no explanation oftentimes. So we can experience these things quite often, and, and it seems as quick, and I want to clarify something. I want to make sure that I'm clear with this. I, I mentioned falling a lot, and oftentimes as Christians, we think of falling in terms of falling away from God. But that's not what we're talking about here. That's not what the psalmist is describing in these verses. This, again, it, it goes to this awareness of, of being upended, of being disoriented, of being you know, without control or understanding. That, that sensation. If you've ever physically fallen and you've gone through this this feeling of being upended, the, the, the description that I've given you here, you, you could probably relate. They're, they're pretty similar. And that's why we use it interchangeably like that. So again, we're not talking about falling away from God, but this sensation of, of disorientation, of, of everything just completely out of your control. 
And the psalmist describes that. And, and it's interesting because I mentioned that we can oftentimes, well, everything will be going good, right? And we can feel these, these, these feelings of depression, of anxiety. And I think that Christians may even be a little more susceptible to that than others because as Christians, I think we're generally more aware of, of the brokenness of this world and of our own brokenness. We have this acute capacity to see the sin in our own life and our need for salvation, the need for a Savior, but we also see the sin in the world itself. And so maybe sometimes it's a more of a subconscious recognition of our own sins, our own inadequacies. If we don't completely accept God's mercy, and I know this may sound kind of odd, but if we don't completely accept God's mercy and His forgiveness, then we can allow our own self-judgment. Thinking about our own brokenness, I recognize I'm not worthy. I mess up all the time. And I know God forgives me, but how can he forgive me? See, this is that not fully accepting. How can he forgive someone like me? Right? And we may not even realize that, that we're going through this and that we're doing this, but just thinking about our sin, knowing our sin, knowing all these inadequacies, and allowing our own self-judgment to overrule his mercy and grace. And that's one of the ways in which we can, everything else, seems like everything is, is going pretty well, right? Otherwise, maybe it is. But that some conscious thought can lead us into that. And so we have to be careful of that. You know, these, all these different ways in which we can, we can feel as though we're falling, all these things that can lead to this. And we can get caught up in the stresses, in being overwhelmed. Yeah, it's funny. I, I mentioned there's four parts of this, uh, to, these, to this text that we can talk about, and I just spent half to three quarters of the, of the sermon on one quarter of the text. Um, but it's to try and help us to understand and to, to relate to what the psalmist is talking about here, that first part of this text is really about our relating to the psalmist, about our feelings, the, the way we get overwhelmed, the, the, the sense of, of falling that we experience as individuals, and, and the realization that we're not alone in this. We all experience it, and the realization that it does happen to each and every one of us. But then the rest of the verses, the rest of the, these other three parts, they're, they're pretty, pretty standard regardless of translation with one exception. And I'll touch on that for, in a second. But the rest of this translation continues by saying, but Yahweh helped me. Yahweh is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. So the point of all of this and looking at these verses is a recognition, understanding that whether we may feel like we could fall or that we're actively falling or that we've already fallen and that we're becoming so overwhelmed and just increasingly overwhelmed, it's, it seems like it's just flooding us. The point is, is that God is there. God is our help. I keep coming back to that. God is our help. I keep seeing it in these verses, and, and that's another that's a sermon for another day. But think about the, the term helper in the Bible. Think about that. Really think about it. Do some research on that. And you might know where a future sermon's going to go because that's an interesting one in itself. Especially where the term helper was first used in Scripture. And then think about God being described as our helper. Think about that. Do the research. You're going you're gonna to love it. 
But God is our helper, though, and he is our strength. And then the one part where it kind of bears off a little bit, I mentioned in this, the reading I just said, he's my song. In the, in the NIV that I read here, it said is my defense. And that particular word there can be described in, in a couple different ways. It's song, if you, if you think about how song was used in the Old Testament, oftentimes you'll actually see that it was, uh, song was a very powerful, especially when it came to the enemies. Think about Jericho. Uh, song was a sign of God's might, of his power. And so we see God as being our help. We see him as our strength. Now we see him being our might, our power. You know, we see that he is all of that. And he is our salvation. He is so much more. But we still, we know, right? We know we are, we are fallen in sin. We all know this, and there's no use even trying to deny it. And the unfortunate part is, is some people get, even Christians, get stuck in that, how fallen I am. How can God love someone like me? How can someone love someone who's done what I've done, said what I've said, treated people the way I've treated people? So sometimes we can, even after we've gone through the waters of baptism, we've risen to new life, we can still, unfortunately, cling a little bit too much to the old life. We can hold on to those doubts. So yes, we are fallen in sin. But we have to remember that because of our great God's love and mercy, we are risen in Christ. We are risen to new life. Now, the difficult truth of life, I'm going to share something with you you probably already know. Whether Christian or not, the trials and pain, the struggles and troubles come to us all. We all face them. Our faith, our belief, does absolutely nothing to shield us from them in this fallen world. It's the truth. And we actually have, if you want, if you want further proof, see, I say that our faith and our belief does nothing to shield us from these struggles, from these pains. We have a list, quite a list of examples uh, of, of that truth right here. I don't think there's a person mentioned in here that didn't go through some sort of trial, trouble, suffer some pain. Even the only person to ever live exactly and perfectly in accord with God's will, Jesus, suffered. So we all know the sensation of falling. And it's likely, very likely, that we will feel it again. But the hope that we have, the strength that is available to us to endure, is in knowing that these battles in this war is God's. That ultimately all of this all of the, these things that decay and erode and break down and hurt, they'll be gone. And there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And thinking about that, I kind of, God keeps leading me on to different little rabbit trails with scriptures. So I'm looking forward to some things that we're going to talk about in the, in the future here. But there will be a new heaven and earth, and, and those that believe, and are faithful that, that come to God through Jesus will be made new. The promise is there to endure these times and in the end overcome. Overcome because Jesus overcame it all. So no matter the state that we're in, the circumstances that we face, if we stay true to God in our heart with our words, 
interactions, he'll never forsake us. He is always here with us. He will continue always to be our helper, our strength, our power, and our salvation. But we're going to go through times like this. We're going to struggle. It is inevitable. And yes, God could easily just snap his fingers and, and take it all away, right? Well, can, yeah, he's going to do that eventually. At the resurrection, it'll all be made new. But right now, we live in a world of our making, a world that we messed up, and we continue to mess up. And so what does God do? He provides so that we may endure. If you know the definition of endure, it's not something that's quick. To endure something is to outlast. So we will go through troubles, but He provides that which we need to make it through, to endure those times of troubles and to keep moving forward and to keep being able to Continuing to keep our eyes on Him first and foremost. To keep our focus upon Him through His Son, Jesus. So yes, we feel surrounded at times, because we are. We feel like we're falling, because we are. But we're not alone in those times. I mentioned yet last week, we are surrounded by enemies, but we are also surrounded by God's hand. And think about that. Those enemies, now the psalmist says the enemies push and cause him to fall. Falling where? Into God's hands? Sounds like a pretty good place to fall. Throughout all of it, He has us. We know. and We have confidence in what we know. We know the end. We just have to endure. But we're not doing it on our own. I know that I'm not doing it on my own. I, could, I wouldn't be here today if I were doing it on my own. I'm doing it because He's with me. And whether it's that power standing next to me in some way, shape, or form, but more often than not, it's brothers and sisters in Christ. It's the people around me that He works in and through. He's always here. And I thank Him so much for that. So when we feel like we're surrounded, when we are falling, we still know that we can stand because He is the one holding us up. I want to continue this next week. We're going to close out the, the sermonette within a sermon, I guess you could say, uh, series. Um, we're going to look at verses 15 and 16 next week and really kind of wrap this whole idea of, of, of God being with us in, in a nice, uh, I don't want to say bow, but <laughs> nice package. Uh, we'll, we'll really uh, put an emphasis on that and uh, then be able to continue on after that. At this time, at this time, I would like to uh, close with a word of prayer and then ask Brother Stephen to uh, close the service out with the final song and to release everyone after that. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you again for the blessing of this day. We thank you that we are able to join together to worship you, to give you honor and glory as you deserve, that we are able to recognize you as our creator, uh, as, as a loving Father who has only the best interest for us, that you are here with us in every moment. You are providing us with all that we need, the strength, the help, the power and might, 
the salvation that will allow us to endure these times of trouble, the times that may seem overwhelming, that you help to lift us up. And Lord, I pray that each of those within the sound of my voice, that in their times of difficulties, when they do feel like they're falling, that they would know that they are indeed, as, as a wonderful young lady has told me once before, that they are falling into your hands. And Lord, just help us to take comfort in that. Help us to share that joy and that blessed message to those around us. Lord, we love you and we praise you. It is in your name and through the name of your son, Jesus, that we pray. Amen.